Released in 1962, Dr. No kicks off the thrilling adventures of James Bond, a British spy out to stop a wicked villain. The movie is packed with action, suspense, and spying. It takes you to cool places and keeps you on the edge of your seat with danger. But it's not all serious. There are also funny, surprising, and sad parts that stick with you. Share your favorite character and memories from the movie in the comment entrance below. Stay tuned for more cool facts about this classic film. In 1962, a film called Dr. No hit the screens, introducing audiences to a world of espionage, intrigue, and action. Imagine this, the opening scene sets the tone, Emil traversing viewers in a mysterious world where danger lurks around every corner. As the suspense builds, we're drawn into the plot, fascinated by the mysterious figure at its center. The movie features a shadowy villain with nefarious intentions who embodies the fears and anxieties of the Cold War era. His cunning intellect and ruthless demeanor make him a formidable adversary for our hero, James Bond. The character, portrayed by Sean Connery, quickly became associated with espionage and adventure, captivating audiences worldwide. Set against the backdrop of the 1960s, the film reflects the tensions and uncertainties of the time. With its stylish look and thrilling storyline, the movie captured the imaginations of audiences, securing its place in cinematic history. But Dr. No is more than just a movie. It's a cultural phenomenon that has lasted for decades. Its influence can be seen in numerous spy thrillers and action films that followed, shaping the genre for years to come. So, whether you enjoy classic cinema or simply love a good adventure, the movie is a must-watch. Join James Bond as he battles against the forces of evil in this timeless classic that continues to connect with audiences today. Terence Young, the director, infused humor into the movie, believing it would make objectionable scenes more palatable and help bypass censorship. Dr. No's Dragon Tank, a swamp buggy covered in metal sheeting, moved on a special underwater ramp to prevent sinking. Sean Connery, who played Bond, had a severe fear of spiders. The scene with the tarantula was filmed with a glass barrier between him and the spider, with a stuntman later doing close-up shots. The tarantula, named Rosie, made for a harrowing stunt. Ursula Andress became well known for her role as Honey Rider in a famous movie scene where she wore a white swimsuit. However, filming in a smelly marsh for another scene was tough for her. In the original book, she didn't wear a bikini, but in the movie, she did. The start of the movie, made by Morris Binder for 2,000 pounds, set the mood for what was to come. It showed with mystery and excitement. Despite difficulties during filming, these parts of the movie are still remembered today. Ursula Andress's role as Honey Rider and the beginning of the movie were essential in making it memorable. Even with challenges during filming, people still like these parts of the movie. In the initial drafts of the script, there was a rumor that the villain, later known as Dr. No, was originally conceived as a monkey. Screenwriters Wolf Mankiewicz and Richard Maybaum initially wrote a story about a shipping magnate named Butchwold planning to destroy the Panama Canal. In their version, Dr. No was a monkey god worshipped on the island, with the villain keeping a capuchin monkey as a pet. However, producers Albert R. Broccoli and Harry Saltzman advised them to align more closely with the source material. Dissatisfied with the changes, Mankiewicz had his name removed from the credits. Later, he co-wrote the James Bond parody Casino Royale, which starred Ursula Andress, known for her role as Honey Rider in the film. The iconic scene where Honey emerges from the water was scripted simply as Bond's eyeline observing Honey standing at the water's edge, naked except for a wisp covering her. Honey's character was dubbed by Nikki van der Zyl in both Dr. No and From Russia with Love. In the movie Dr. No, the character Ernst Stavro Blofeld was portrayed by only one actor for a considerable time until Christoph Waltz took on the role in later films. The score album for the movie features the James Bond theme along with versions of Underneath, The Mango Tree, Jump Up, and a re-recording of The Island Speaks. Other tracks on the album are unrelated to the movie and have been re-recorded by the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra. Samuel J. Friedman, the head of national publicity for United Artists, enlisted glamour model Bunny Yeager to photograph Ursula Andress during filming in Jamaica. Yeager would capture Andress between takes amidst the natural surroundings. At the start, Bond enters his apartment to find Sylvia Trench playing golf. Originally, she was supposed to be nude, but the censors disagreed. In a December 1987 interview with Barbara Walters, he caused controversy by suggesting it was acceptable to hit a woman if necessary. 
He had made similar remarks in a November 1965 interview with Playboy magazine. For a considerable period, the film shared the record with Goldfinger as the shortest James Bond movie in the Eon Productions official series, clocking in at 1 hour and 50 minutes. However, Quantum of Solace now holds the title as the shortest, with a runtime of 1 hour and 46 minutes. In the movie Dr. No, Felix Slater, a CIA agent, appears alongside James Bond. Felix Slater is portrayed by different actors in each film Jack Lord in Dr. No, David Hedison in Live and Let Die, and Jeffrey Wright in No Time to Die. Ursula Andress, who plays Honey Rider, left an impression at the rap party due to her uninhibited nature. Lois Maxwell recalls being struck by Andress's braless attire and her carefree dancing. While searching for Dr. No's hideout, Honey Rider and Coral mention a dragon sighting which Bond dismisses as non-existent. Interestingly, Sean Connery, who portrayed James Bond, later voiced a dragon in the film Dragonheart, released in 1996. The movie showcases various dynamics and characters that contribute to its intrigue and legacy. In the 1962 movie Dr. No, actor played two Bond villains Professor R.J. Dent and Ernst Stavro Blofeld in subsequent films. Although rumors suggested Ursula Andress appeared nude in a shower scene, she wore a nude-colored swimsuit. Following the movie's release in Italy, the Vatican criticized its moral stance in a special Kamalam Druniké. In the movie Dr. No, there's a story that set pieces were made smaller to make James Bond seem bigger. However, Sean Connery, who played Bond, was almost six inches taller than the average actor. Nicky van der Zyl dubbed Ursula Andress. Various product placements and tie-ins were seen in the movie, such as Turnbull and Asser Tailoring, Pan Am Airlines, Rolex, Dom Perignon Champagne, Red Stripe Beer, Black and White Scotch, BOAC Airlines, and Smirnoff Vodka. Bond wears a Rolex Submariner in the film. Sir Sean Connery secured the role of James Bond after producer Albert R. Broccoli was impressed by his performance in Darby O'Gill and The Little People. Broccoli's wife confirmed Connery's sex appeal. Despite a contest, Connery emerged as the ideal choice, winning praise for his portrayal of James Bond in Dr. No and from Russia with Love, earning him the Variety Club of Great Britain Special Award in 1963. The political aftermath of the Cuban Missile Crisis delayed the release of Dr. No in the United States. Peter Anthony, a model chosen as a finalist, lacked the acting skills required for the role, leading Connery to shine as James Bond. In the 1962 movie Dr. No, the first actor to portray CIA agent Felix Later in the James Bond series debuted alongside Sean Connery. He shares his name, John Patrick Ryan, with Tom Clancy's CIA hero. Julie Christie almost landed the role of Honey Rider, but producer Albert R. Broccoli found her unsuitable. The film's title inspired a spoof in The Flintstones, featuring a character named Madame Yes.